This volcanic cathedral provides a fascinating new perspective on Iceland's central rift. And research here should help scientists like Bjorn to understand better how the opening of that rift controls Iceland's volcanic activity. The last eruption on this part of the rift was 3,000 years ago. But other parts of the rift have opened up much more recently, as the inhabitants of an island just off the south coast of Iceland can testify. This is Heimei, and the entrance to its harbor is protected by dark, looming cliffs a clue to events which rocked this place to its foundations almost 40 years ago. Did this volcano come as a complete surprise to you or did you have any warning? There was no warning whatsoever until 10 o'clock yesterday evening, uh, which was the earthquake. Yeah. Yes. Lava entering the sea causes the water to virtually boil and sends clouds of steam thousands of feet up into the air. January the 23rd, 1973, a fissure a mile long opened up and split this part of the island in two. Great fiery fountains of lava lit up the night sky, alerting the people in this town that they had to escape and quickly. Today on Heimei, evidence of that volcanic eruption is easy to find. This was the stuff that was coming out of that fissure. It is actually a sort of ash, but it's more like gravel, and it was literally raining down. But of course, it wasn't cool, inert stuff like this. It was at about 1,000 degrees Celsius, and this wasn't all that was coming out of that fissure. There were enormous lumps of lava like this. This is called a lava bomb, and these were being thrown out great molten lumps of rock that came thudding into the ground. So to be here when that happened must have felt like being in a living hell. To the 5,000 inhabitants of this tiny island, it felt like the end. The volcano threatened to engulf everything, and although it was a heart-wrenching decision, they knew immediately that they had to leave. It was pure luck that the night the volcano erupted, the harbour was full of fishing boats. And on a normal night, all the men and all the boats would have been out at sea. But there'd been a huge storm the night before that had kept men and boats at home. So when the volcano erupted, suddenly there was a means of escape from what must have seemed at the time an inescapable fate. Most of the population was evacuated to the mainland by boat, but Heimei's natural harbour makes it the most profitable fishing port in the whole of Iceland, and no one was willing to abandon this place for good. Determined to preserve their way of life, about a hundred men stayed behind to try and save as many homes as they could. At first, they concentrated on clearing ash, hoping to stop roofs collapsing. But the ash kept falling, and many houses were soon completely buried. Where a whole neighborhood once thrived, just a single chimney now emerges from the ash. <laughs> 
After a month, the eruption showed no sign of abating, and a huge lava flow advanced towards the town, consuming everything in its path. And when the lava finally reached the coast, it began to threaten the most valuable part of the island. The harbour entrance in Heime was just a few hundred metres wide. But as lava added new land to the coast, there was a real chance that the gap might be closed forever. For those who had stayed behind, like local welder Halle Trygfason, that was the moment the real fight back began. We knew we had to save the harbour because our livelihood depends on being able to sail out to sea. If we're going to live on this island, we have to be able to fish. Our town and way of life wouldn't last long without the fishing industry. That's just the way it is. It seemed impossible that anything could be done to save the harbour. But something that had happened 10 years earlier provided a glimmer of hope. Just a few kilometers from Heimei, an underwater volcano broke the surface in 1963 to create a brand new island called Sertse. As lava flowed into the sea, one volcanologist had watched as it cooled and hardened on contact with the water, creating a barrier which diverted the flows behind it. Ten years later, he realized that what he'd witnessed could be the key to saving Heimei's harbor, and he proposed that they spray seawater directly onto the advancing lava. I was put to work welding pipes together. As soon as we began spraying cold seawater on the lava, it started hardening and gradually heaping up. We noticed that the lava was losing ground and actually being diverted. So everyone was saying, it's working. Spray more on it, spray more. Halle and the rest of the team worked around the clock. A huge network of pipes was put together and extra pumps were shipped in to get water right into the heart of the lava flow. An unbelievable amount of seawater was sprayed onto the lava to try and stop its advance. Huge amounts, constantly. I have no idea how much, but it would be fun to know. Incredibly, cooled by the water, a huge barrier of solidified lava was built up alongside the harbor. This new wall of rock stopped the lava flow 200 meters short of the cliffs on the far side. Today, that gap remains and access to the harbor has been preserved. By taking on the volcano, the people of Heime had maintained their livelihood and to this day, they continue to harvest the rich fishing grounds of the northern Atlantic. It must have been a really fantastic feeling that somehow, against all odds, you were doing it. A volcano isn't exactly an ordinary kind of adversary, not at all. So it was amazing to see our plan actually working. It's incredible that we were able to stop the lava and save our town as well as our harbor. It was miraculous. It just worked. By standing up to the eruption, the people of Heimei had shown a typically Icelandic resilience to the volcanoes around them. As Iceland's Prime Minister told me, the people of all of Iceland live with fire beneath their feet. It was a life-changing event for the population of this island. But as with the vast majority of Icelandic eruptions, only a small area was affected. When Eyjafjallajökull Jökull erupted in 2010, the effects extended way beyond southern Iceland. 
So what is it about this volcano that made it capable of causing an international incident?